Early intervention starts with early identification of what the issues are and concerns are for the child and it's putting in place programs and services that will meet the needs of the child in a timely way but also taking into account what the family requires to support this child. Early childhood intervention is um, in Australia is quite a big service sector. Um, it's around the sorts of services that are useful to children and to families in those early years, so zero up to school entry. It might um, involve consultations perhaps with a range of professionals. You might see a psychologist, a speech therapist, an occupational therapist. Um, lots of teachers are involved in early intervention um, and they will be working with you to talk about what your concerns about your child's development is and what things you would like your child to be learning and what you, they would, you would like some help with. It might, with a little one, it might be helping them to learn to sit um, so that they can then reach for things, something like that. Or it might be about communication. Often it will be around um, um, having, having an assessment and then having a discussion around where the child's trajectory can be and then working on um, what sort of interventions would help to achieve um, the goals that you might set and create a plan and then, then continue to review that to see how um, the child is progressing. It's about what is it that your goals are and what support do you need from the specialist. Early intervention works best when there is a partnership between the family and the service offering that intervention. And what that means is that the parents' skills, abilities and knowledge about their child are taken into account and come to the mix of intervention strategies that are used. So when parents can use some of the strategies that the child might be learning in the early intervention service at home, then of course that strengthens the effect for the child. Some interventions work better than others. Evidence is accumulated over the years using strong scientific method and practitioners in the field should know what that evidence is and should be able to share that with parents. The professionals that are usually involved um, with early childhood intervention is speech, occupational therapy, physiotherapy, psych uh, psychology, um, and in some cases some others around music therapy or other ways that um, can support children in early intervention settings. Sometimes early intervention um, is provided within a centre where you would actually take a child to a centre and receive um, the therapy support that you might need. In other circumstances, it can be a therapist who can come to your home. I think one of the important things about um, working with a whole lot of professionals is being conscious that it's the professional's job to support you and your child, to share with you the specialist knowledge that they have, um, but to listen to you, your concerns and um, the needs of you and your family. One of the things that I worried about for so long was this physical um, inability he seemed to have. He resisted doing anything to put weight through his legs or um, to move around. If he didn't have to move around, he would not move around. He knew that his siblings or somebody would, would bring him something, and they did. Um, but um, the early intervention taught me that um, I, I had to be a little bit stronger for him. It, it would be very easy to be, not complacent, that's not the right word, but um, let him just lay there and, and do it in his own time. So I guess in inter early intervention, one of the things, we, we called it the Hannibal Lecter. We had to strap him into kind of this standing frame and he, so that he had to put his weight through his legs. And I was in tears. I still remember that. He was, he was only two, two and a half at the time. And we were in tears and then we took pictures of him and now we can laugh about him. Yeah, Charlie, here's you in your standing frame. Um, but I wouldn't have done that had I not been pushed by somebody, um, the professionals in early intervention who said this will help him um, put the weight through his legs. So some of those things that you wouldn't think of and, and then down the line, yes, he did start walking. So it, it did work. So I think the early intervention helped me to just, just push 
do things, challenge him in a way that, or all of us in a way that I would, we would not have thought to do. We know that in the first three years particularly, children's experiences influence their brain development. That's for all children. So it's important to have lots of positive uh, learning experiences, um, positive emotional experiences for children in that time. Uh, and that's why the push to encourage families to um, seek early intervention services uh, as soon as they possibly can. If you can really take advantage of this window of time that we have in early intervention and really catch up where, they're, where they've missed a step at that point, that as they get older, the amount of support that they need doesn't have to be as intense. It's never too late to start to change things. Uh, we know that brain development goes on until early adulthood. So even if you're diagnosed, if your child's not diagnosed till they're starting school, it's not too late. You've done lots of stuff that is really important already and now you'll be getting some direction on how to go from here on. Choosing an early intervention provider is an active process where parents think about what their child needs and what their goals are for their child and their family and then carefully examining what that service has to offer. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, you know, take a list of questions into the interview or appointment and don't leave until you've got some response to each of them. I guess one of the challenges with, um, for families too is that there's no one central point to find all this information. So it's a little bit like um, a treasure hunt <laughs> in a way. Families find out about early intervention services through a range of sources. The diagnostician, the person who makes a diagnosis, can often give them important information about what early services are available. But there are organisations that are disability specific that would have a range of options to share with parents. Local government's also a good source of information, as are state government disability services. Those services can be accessed through the, yeah, the internet or by telephone. There's different types of um, funding available through the, um, through the government for support in early intervention. Some, in some instances, funding is available to the child um, and you can then choose what sort of um, therapist and where the therapist might be to suit your needs. Um, other intervention support is actually uh, funded, uh, programs are funded and you need to access them. And so there, in some cases there are choices there, but invariably we find that there are, there's more demand than there is um, availability. So um, it's best to, uh, in the early stages, when you're talking to the early intervention um, uh, managers in each state, to, to put forward exactly what you're, you're feeling that you need and, um, and request put in the best request that you can um, that fits with your family and, uh, and try and um, come up with the best outcome.